In this video I'm gonna do some macro photography with a LED light and uh, I'm gonna try to answer two questions in this video. Number one, is a LED light enough to do macro photography or do you need a flash to get enough light? And also I'm gonna see what happens when we use a nice high quality LED light to do macro videography and see if we can capture anything beautiful and nice. The light I have here is the Aperture Amaran F7 or something like that. And it is a very popular light because it is extremely lightweight and uh, pretty compact and very powerful. And with it you use this Sony NPF batteries. I got a big one and I also purchased a small one. Uh, we'll see which one works best. But I already feel that this battery makes the setup pretty heavy. So I will maybe try to begin with a small battery and see how long that lasts. Anyway, enough talking, let's go outside, let's do some macro photography and videography with a LED light. So it has been raining during the night, but now it is yeah, pretty dry and it is not too warm, at least not here in the forest. So I hope we will be able to find some insects. So since I did the intro I actually changed uh, into this mounting setup with an arm to get the light closer to the front of the lens uh, because I think that is important to get strong enough light and to get a big enough light source to get a nice rendering in the photos. And this is of course a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> with his arm and uh, I hate this but today I felt like it was needed these arms you can find them cheaply on Amazon or eBay uh, I find that regardless of price they are usually the same pretty low quality <laughs> uh, but yeah they kind of work Something like that, perhaps? <laughs> so what I'm finding right now in this area is that I find no insects whatsoever. And that always is a good clue that you should just leave the area entirely. <laughs> Go somewhere else, walk a few hundred meters, because obviously this is not an area where you will find insects. And it's uh, usually a complete waste of time to look around for too long in the same area. So let's go. One of the first things I think about when I see this footage is that it is a bit shaky. It is very hard of course to keep uh, the right focus point all the time. Uh, when you're doing still photography with a macro lens you can afford to miss a lot because you only need one shot where the focus is perfect. But obviously when you're doing video you need to keep the focus correct all the time continuously and that is very hard with insects that move fast so i think next time maybe i will do this early in the morning when the insects are a bit slower i have found one of these things that looks like a gigantic mosquito but it's not <laughs> let's try to film it Maybe I could also have used a monopod or something to keep the camera more steady. Again, uh, having a shaky camera doesn't matter when you do macro photography because you can freeze the action. But in macro videography it is crucial to have a steady picture and to have a steady focus in the right place. Let's try to switch off the light and see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> dark. So I think I get pretty good illumination with this light and also it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty diffused uh, when I have it this close to the front of the lens. 
<clears throat> now I'm using 160 for a second in shutter speed, ISO 400, uh, f8 in aperture. And that seems to be a pretty good balance for this light. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So we have arrived at the Ant Superhighway. <laughs> Let's try to film them and uh, see how it looks. Another thing I want to try for my next macro videography walk is to do some slow motion. In this photo walk I filmed everything at 30 fps and uh, with fast moving insects it's very hard to get a smooth nice video. But if I shoot at 120 fps for example and then slow it down I think it would look very smooth and nice and not as jittery and shaky as it looks now. So that is something I want to try for my next uh, walk with this LED light. So that was a Harley Quinn ladybug and I tried to take some photos of it uh, to see if the, the light is strong enough uh, to take high magnification macro photos. So I was at two times magnification, one two hundredth in shutter speed because uh, I have found that that is um, what you need in macro photography to be able to take sharp photos if you're not using a fast flash to freeze the action. And then I used ISO 400 and yeah, judge for yourself how you like the look of the photos. Here are some more still photos that I took at ISO 400 and as you can see they really look like crap. I think part of the reason is I used ISO 400 and underexposed so I had to lift the exposure a couple of stops in Lightroom and that was too much. The colors are not looking good when brought up this much at the high ISO. And also I think I might have been wrong about 1 200th being enough in shutter speed. I can see here that the photos aren't completely sharp. And I think that is because the insect and the leaf and everything was moving too fast and 1 200th is probably not really enough. So my simple conclusion here at home when I'm looking at these photos afterwards is that a LED light is not enough to do macro photography, at least not if you want pretty nice looking results. And please do remember that this is a pretty powerful LED light and it is placed very close to the subject. So I really did what I could here, I think. But for video, when you only need 1 60th of a second in shutter speed, it looks good, right? I think it looks awesome. Uh, it's enough light and uh, the exposure is, is nice. So I think I'm getting a pretty good sequence here of this little beetle. I'm using focus magnification to help with focusing. And uh, the reason I'm using 1 60th is shutter speed is uh, because of this, what's it called? The 180 degree rule or something, which basically says that if you use 1 30th in frame rate for your videos, as I do, then you should double that for the shutter speed to get uh, nice smooth uh, motion. So I usually shoot at 1 60th no matter if I'm doing macro or normal video. I'm really happy that I went for this arm solution uh, for doing this video because the light really needs to be this close to the subject to be um, bright enough to take nice videos. So I began today by walking in a forest uh, for like one and a half hours and I couldn't find any insects basically to photograph. <laughs> uh, so I said fuck it, went home, had some lunch and now I'm back here uh, in a place where I know that I always find lots of insects. So yeah, let's see. Obviously you should be very careful when walking in high grass like this in the summer because there will be a lot of ticks um, many times at least here in the Stockholm region close to the sea um, I've gotten vaccinated against TBE which is the virus uh, but you can still get Borrelia uh, or Lyme disease uh, which are bacterial infections and uh, not that fun so I always uh, check myself when I get home to make sure that there were no ticks and to remove them 
Uh, usually I have a few hours up to like a day before they start burying into your skin. Uh, so it's good to check right after you get home. Oh, a deer. I can see that the deer has been resting here. So I probably messed up his afternoon nap. <laughs> As you can see I used a smaller 2400 milliamp hour battery the whole time and it was enough for like two or three hours uh, photo walk uh, with plenty of filming so I think you don't need a big battery for this uh, a small one is enough uh, for most photo walks doesn't seem to be a great day for insect photography I'm not finding as many as I usually do uh, I'm not sure if it is because it has been raining heavily during the night, if that affects it in a way, because I sometimes notice that when it has been raining a lot, there are fewer insects out. Uh, maybe some of you know. <laughs> the diffuser I used is a very simple screen that you just put on the light itself, and this one gets sent with the light, so you will have it if you buy the light. And uh, it seems sufficient, I think, to get a nice looking video. Of course, you could diffuse it even more by placing a regular diffuser in front of it, even though it would be a bit weaker then. But that is something you could try to get even nicer diffusion. I'm really happy I have this grip extension on my A7 III. The grip on the A7 III is not really that good and it is especially noticeable if you're using something heavy on the camera like a heavy lens or a heavy flash or yeah, a heavy light rig then it really starts straining your hand and your arm if you're not having a really good grip but with the grip extension I find that yeah, the grip feels very nice As in the macro photography I always try to block the sun whenever possible. Direct sunlight never looks that good uh, on insects I have found. And that of course holds for video as well. So I found some larvas, some I guess it is moth larvas. Uh, most of them are gone by now. I guess they have developed further. But I see some larvas here. So let's try to catch them. It really is a major hassle to deal with this arm. I really hate it. And whenever you, you want to put it in a bag, it, you have to kind of uh, pick it apart or fold it somehow. And it, yeah, it's just annoying. That is why I like uh, a small flash and a compact diffuser that you can easily take out of a bag and put into a bag. This is kind of annoying. When you have to adjust it. I'm really happy with the Aperture F7. I think it's a very good LED light, uh, not only for macro photography, but also for other uses. I'm very happy I purchased it. I did compare it to a lot of different lights and I looked at a lot of reviews before purchasing it, but I think it really was worth every penny and it comes warmly recommended from me. I can really understand why so many YouTubers and other videographers are excited about this light. And that's it for this little video. Now you know what you can do with a LED light and a macro lens. 
I know that the footage uh, that I got wasn't the best, but this was my first time ever trying macro videography. And I just wanted to share what I learned today with you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you like macro photography. A new video is coming very soon. Bye bye.